And to celebrate the release of The Amazing Spider-Man, can't wait to see it. Spot decided to go back and have a look at some of the older Spider-Man figures. Now today, even though Spot's already reviewed this guy, consider this an Amazing Spider-Man throwback. Because today's throwback, we're having a look at the Hasbro Spider-Man series Scorpion Stinger Venom. Uh, I believe this is dated 2009. Is that correct? 2009? Let's see where there's... Yes, there is a date, 2009. And uh, this is the Scorpion Stinger Venom. Probably it's, it works out itself out really well that Spot can re-review this. Now, Spot did not go back in time. I happen to have had two of these. One was sealed, one was loose. Um, I'm Even though I'm going to be discussing the package end of this figure like such, I will actually just pull the figure out, the one I've already opened. Let me keep this one sealed. Uh, but this comes to us from Hasbro. This line, uh, this line was, uh, I don't know, a questionable line on the back. Even though we did get the, the McFarlane Spider-Man, which a lot of people were clamoring to get, uh, this was a fairly inexpensive way to get that uh, Spider-Man again. A little darker color scheme, but still a really great Spider-Man. We've also got some ridiculous uh, Spider-Man scuba armor. I don't know what's going on there. We have a black costume Spider-Man. Uh, a very disappointing Juggernaut, which I also did a review of. Venom, which was a, uh, a repack of the Spider-Man Classics Venom. And also a repack of a Spider-Man Classics uh, Carnage. You could collect them all. So really, it was a safe bet that if you didn't get a chance to get some of these figures initially, you could go back and pick them up again. Uh, the J Juggernaut, again, was a uh, a new figure to this wave, along with the Venom. Speaking of Venom, the read-up says, Matt Gargan is the first psycho to meld with the uh, Venom symbiote, but he's the most dangerous by far. Originally, a, a regular guy hired by J. Jonah Jameson to take down Spider-Man, his sanity was deranged by the experiment that gave him his powers. Uh, it was destroyed entirely by his bond with the symbiote, now of full knowledge of the Web Slinger's secret identity, he becomes the most dangerous foe Spider-Man has ever faced. You can see that the, the Stinger tail is superposable. We'll get into that in a second. Um, this was definitely a figure I wanted to re-review anyways. It gave me a good chance. Maybe a little bit better lighting. I can give a better rating of the figure and talk a little more about it. But uh, stay tuned. For this throwback, there's definitely more to come as we have a look once again at the Scorpion Stinger Venom. Stay tuned. I've taken the liberty of taking off, taking off the tail that came with the Scorpion Stinger Venom. Because I think initially when I did the first time I did this review, I had the tail simply on. And a couple of people have asked, a couple of people asked in that video if the tail could come off or if you could have it without the tail. And absolutely, absolutely, you can keep the tail off if you so wish. Even though I had the tail on the first time I had this figure out, um, I kind of like it without the tail. You could, I mean, you could do either or, but there's a peg on the back here. What we can do is just peg it into place, like so, and the tail is now on Venom. It's your choice, again, if you want it off. If you want it off, you could just pull it back off. There's no harm in doing that. I wouldn't do it too often though, just in case that peg breaks off. Let's have a look at the actual face of Venom. Now being it's Matt Gargan's Venom, what we had normally had seen with Venom before with the all solid white eyes, uh, we now have the red eyes, the red pupils of the Matt Gargan Venom. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit different than the original Venom. I really like the tongue on this Venom as well. It's long, slimy I'm pretty sure as well. Um, I, I suppose, really, as a simple uh, customiz customization on this figure, you probably just get some Sculpey, and you could cover over those eyes so it's a, a, uh, a smooth surface, and then just paint that area in white. And uh, you, as simple as that, you take the tail off, as simple as that, you could just have a regular Venom, an Eddie Brock Venom. I'm almost surprised that Hasbro just hasn't simply repacked this guy as an, as an original Venom, because everything else 
for the most part is pretty much just consistent right down to the squares on the hands the symbiote spider is about the same as well now, one thing I really like about this figure and I don't even know if I mentioned this during the initial review but uh, it's one of my favorite Venom bodies I think still a lot of people consider the Spider-Man Classics Venom um, as, as probably the best Venom released figure. But there's something really interesting, really uh, fascinating about this particular body. Um, of course we have all the articulation that we need in the figure, but I really like how wide and how large his arms are. This really narrow torso and then much broader in the chest there. He's a little shorter in the legs, but it only adds to the kind of beefiness of the of the figure itself. Um, now he does have, as with most Venom figures, I think the only real exception is the fiercest, what is it, the fiercest foes or the sinister, I think it was the sinister Venom, sinister six Venom, uh, which I think was just all black, but most Venoms and black costume Spider-Man tend to have a secondary wash, usually like it's a blue or it's, you know, it's a purple. In this case, we have a standard black body Venom and then there's an added wash of a purple. You can see a little bit of the purple in the shoulders, some purple in the arms. It's there, but it's not, it's not in your face. Sometimes they put too much of a wash on and it just takes away from the figure. Uh, this actually works really, really well on this particular uh, figure here. Um, I love the detail work. You can see all the veins going on in his, uh, in his arms, veins in his legs. A lot of detail in the sculpt of the tail as well. It's really, really nice. In the way of Scorpion Stinger's articulation, Scorpion Stinger Venom, he has a very nice uh, ball jointed head. You can get the head down pretty low, almost too low. You're not really going to have your Venom figure that, that low, but uh, you can definitely get a lot of movement out of him. He has a pin and socket shoulder, which... Uh, this one arm seems to move fairly easily. This arm, a little, little more difficult. Um, but it does rotate all the way around. You can bend at the elbow. There doesn't seem to be any swivel or anything in the bicep, which is fine. However, you can bend the hands. The, pen, the hands are on a hinge. You can also rotate the hands as well. Also, as a side note, I really love the sculpt on these hands. You get these massive claws going on there, which I think is really cool. He has a, a bowl jointed upper torso, however he does have a swivel in the waist as well. He has a pin and socket leg, the legs will move back and forth in and out. Uh, nothing in the ankle, or nothing in the thigh, a two point bend in the knee, and finally a bend in the foot. Now that's the figure, when you get to the actual tail, the tail itself looks like it's on a single hinge on the, on the first joint, then a bowl joint on the second a ball joint on the third, a ball joint on the fourth, and then also a ball joint right at the tip where the the actual uh, claw or top piece to the tail is. So lots of movement as well from the tail. Again, if you're not one of uh, a big fan of this, you can certainly just take it off if you so wish, um, like so. No harm, no fuss, although as you can see, there's stress that will I don't have any stress marks, anything on this tail so far, but I would imagine putting this back in, taking it back out, eventually that peg may strip, or you might break that off, and then that tail's not going to go in. So kind of decide ahead of time how often, or decide ahead of time really if you want this tail in, or if you want it out. I would certainly not recommend continuing to remove it, continuing to put it in, because it will eventually probably break. Um, I like the tail though. I even like, I mean, I like the, I like the Venom really without the tail too. And I might just keep the tail out for the rest of the time that I have this figure displayed. Uh, this is a great figure. I am so glad I was able to re-review him. Because I gotta say, Spot, some of his older videos, that's my thumbs down by the way. Uh, definitely wanted to get a chance. And really with the fact that the Spider-Man movie is coming soon to theaters or it might even be out depending on when I get this review out. Uh, it was a great chance for me to go back and reshoot some of these older figures for you. The Hasbro 2009 Scorpion Stinger Venom. I think I'm going to give him a 9. I can't even for the life of me remember if I actually gave him a, a, a rating the first time around. But uh, he's definitely worth a figure picking up. 
you can probably find them. Likely it's going to be on eBay now more than anything else. But do do yourself a favor. If you're a Venom fan, go and pick him up. Immediately. Immediately. Today's throwback, we're having a look at the Scorpion Stinger Venom. I thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.